Millions of years ago, before people and gods existed in the cosmos, there was a supernatural force known as the Titans. They were the most powerful and godly beings, but their own sons, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, destroyed their dominion. Zeus, the eldest brother, was the most intelligent of the siblings. He convinced his brother Hades to use his abilities to create a monstrous and terrible beast that could destroy their parents. They formed the unfathomable terror of Kraken from Hades' flesh, ending the Titans and giving the brothers enormous power. During the dispersal of their parents' powers, Zeus becomes the god of heaven, and Poseidon becomes the deity of the sea. Still, Zeus tricks Hades into becoming the carrier of the underworld's trauma and misery. Then, Zeus created humankind, whose prayers kept him and the other gods eternal. At the same time, Hades gained strength by exploiting human fear. However, as time passes, Murder and sorrow spread in Zeus's lovely world. People begin to wonder why their father would subject them to such agony, and their faith in God starts to dwindle, hinting at the horrifying prospect of a struggle between gods and humankind. The scenario moves to a poor fisherman navigating a deadly sea storm. He notices a coffin-like box drifting towards him in the middle of the water. He manages to get into his boat and comes upon a terrifying scene. Inside the casket lies the body of a woman clutching her newborn child, who is thankfully still alive. The fisherman picks up the infant boy and pledges to protect and nourish him. A mystery lady is observing them intently from somewhere nearby. When the child reaches the age of adolescence, the fisherman's wife becomes pregnant. While the youngster is concerned that his father may forget him after having his own blood in his arms, he is reassured that their tie is more profound than any blood relationship. As time passes, the child grows into a fearless fisherman called Perseus. He has a young sister that he loves beyond all else, as well as a lovely family of four. The human revolt against the gods has grown in number. Several countries have burned religious monuments, led soldiers to Olympus, and quit worshipping entirely all of which have presented a serious danger to the immortals' lives. Perseus and his family are on their way to fish on their boat one day. Even after hours of searching, their nets come up empty. His father accuses the gods of punishing them with famine and starvation, but his mother insists that, at the very least, they have life. Perseus remains involved in the discussion, since his sole worry is his starving family. They are startled to discover a gigantic statue of Zeus being assaulted by several gods. They are troops from the kingdom of Argos, whose ruler has ordered them to demolish the monument. There is a brief period of calm after the enormous concrete sculpture falls, before something begins to move in the water. Suddenly, Bat-like humanoids fly into the skies and slaughter the troops one by one. Perseus and his family stand in awe, scared to move and attract the flying demon's attention. When the murders end, the flying demons merge into one and become Hades, the underworld deity. Hades' eyes are drawn to the boat Perseus is in because he is there to punish those who have dared to dishonor his brother. He gently pushes it sending the whole family into the water. Perseus makes every effort to save his loved ones, but in the end, he is the sole survivor. In the next scene, an Argonian rescue squad takes Perseus to the palace. Despite being the lone survivor of the battle, the king declares victory and instructs his warriors to rejoice, along with her spouse. The queen refers to herself as a deity and insults Zeus with her severe judgment. Before she knows it, the terrible Hades comes in front of them and drains her beauty and youth. Enraged by his family's murder, Perseus attempts to attack him but is stopped by a lady. Hades does not want to slaughter everyone in the palace since human fear fuels his might. Instead, 
He offers them a choice to surrender their lovely princess as a sacrifice to him, or the unfathomable terror of Kraken will be released on our goats. Hades turns towards Perseus after explaining that the monarch has ten days to decide. He stops briefly and addresses him as do son before vanishing. Perseus is confused by his remarks, but everyone else realizes he is a demigod the son of a deity and a human. He is imprisoned and tortured in the hopes of finding a solution to rescue the city. The lovely princess attempts to halt the warriors. She is willing to give her life if it means her people will survive. But the king does not desire that. In the following scenario, a lady can visit Perseus in jail. She is the same mysterious lady who was there when the fishermen discovered Perseus, and who previously prevented him from attacking Hades. She identifies herself as Io, a mortal who ignored a god's advances and was doomed to never age or die. It scarcely seems to be a curse, but Io adds that she was forced to watch all of her loved ones die and live without them. She knows everything about Perseus, his mother, and how they ended up in the water since she has lived for over a thousand years. Several years ago, a country's renegade ruler marched a vast army toward Olympus, infuriating the gods. Zeus, who loved humankind as if they were his own, didn't want to murder them. So he decided to make an example of the king instead. Zeus went to the queen, disguised as the king, and made love to her. When the king returned after the war, he discovered his wife had been pregnant by his deadliest enemy. He packed her into a coffin and flung her into the sea, where she gave birth to Perseus. Perseus has finally figured out how his existence came to be, and his sole purpose now is to murder Hades in retaliation. Io tells him that if he kills Crocken, Hades will be at his weakest giving him the most incredible opportunity to kill him. As a result, Perseus joins the Argosian troops on their quest to discover and destroy the Kraken. The fourth day of their travel goes swiftly, and the commander in charge asks Perseus whether he knows how to handle a sword. He is given a brief demonstration before being assaulted suddenly. Perseus first falls but soon catches up and amazes everyone. It is said that he possesses the body of a god due to his inherent ability for sword combat. Then we see Perseus' stepfather, a ruler living as a peasant in a gloomy cave. Hades approaches the guy and tells him he works for Zeus to earn his confidence and strike him when he is weakest. Because the former monarch also wants to stead, he will go to any length to please Hades. As a result, the god of the underworld transformed him into a demon and sent him to kill Perseus. While the troops rest for the day, Perseus wanders into the bush and discovers a sword and a swarm of winged horses. They were given to him by Zeus, his father, who wants his son to have a fair shot at victory. On the other hand, Perseus declines both the sword and the pure black horse intended for him. When he hears a soldier begs for help, he realizes the demon sent by Hades has arrived to slaughter everyone. He charges at Perseus with a lethal attack, but the hero is quick to protect himself. The soldiers join him and defeat the monster, severing his left hand and pushing him to depart. They soon track him, but must break into two groups to find him. The demon vanishes. But the troops are attacked by a massive scorpion that lives under the sand. A violent conflict begins, claiming the lives of several men one by one. Perseus is nearly stung at one point, but Io saves him just in time. When the scorpion dies, and they believe they have triumphed, they are surrounded by a swarm of ever larger scorpions. The troops prepare to battle again and are shocked when the enormous beasts come to a halt. One of them motions to a neighboring individual, who happens to be Jen. They are the monsters who were once people, but have been transformed into charcoal and connected with dark magic. The commander does not trust them, 
but accepts assistance for the night. Perseus collapses to the ground, moaning from his damaged arm, which Hades' poison has infected. The Jin commander heals the arm with dark magic in his tent that night. The soldiers misunderstand him resulting in a little scuffle. But the Jin reveals that his type has been waiting for Ian's for gods to fail, and Perseus is their last hope. They ride scorpions over the desert in the morning, and arrive at Stygia's garden in the evening. Perseus discovers that this is the location where the Kraken defeated the Titans. They go further into the uninhabited area, searching for the Stygian witches, who know the secret of killing Crockett. Io cautions Perseus to be cautious and only ask the witches what he needs to know. They enter a cave and encounter three hideous witches, one holding an eyeball that allows them all to see. They attack the soldiers because they smell fresh human blood. But Perseus grabs their eyeball and uses it as leverage to liberate his friends. Finally, the witches disclose that the only way to defeat Kraken is through the demon Medusa. Long ago, the sea god Poseidon fell in love with and manipulated the beautiful Medusa. She begged the goddess Athena for help, but the god was humiliated by her. As a result, Medusa was cursed never to be seen by a living thing. Everyone who saw her face would turn to stone, even Kraken. Soon after, the squad departs underground to search for Masuda's temple. On their journey, Perseus meets his father, Deuce, who invites him to come to paradise and live a happy life. Perseus declines the offer, but receives a gold coin as a goodbye present from Zeus. The squad is in front of the water in the next scene which takes them to the underworld. The djinn bribes the ferryman with Perseus' currency, and they are immediately carried to Medusa's temple. It is forced to remain outside since only males are permitted inside the temple, but she cautions them that no man has ever escaped. As the squad enters the temple, they are greeted by a feminine laugh. Perseus instructs everyone to keep their eyes down and their guards up. Suddenly, Arrows begin to come their way, striking the commander in the chest, and before they know it, they are being attacked by the demon. Perseus almost falls into a fire hollow, but saves Jen and himself just in time. Medusa causes problems for two young troops searching for the rest of the gang. They both make the mistake of looking at her face which costs them their lives. The Medusa attempts to transform the djinn into stones, but fails since the creature no longer has flesh on his body. The djinn laughs at Medusa and blows himself up, resulting in a massive explosion that knocks the monster and Perseus away. The commander uses this chance to stab her tail before turning himself into stone. Finally, Perseus beheads her with his sword. Taking advantage of her weakness, Medusa jumps forward as the warrior leaps forward, stabbing frantically at the demon's neck while keeping his eyes closed. Perseus successfully cuts through the beast, allowing Medusa's head to tumble to the ground. Io is overjoyed as he sees Perseus emerge with a sack containing Meta's head. Her joy, however, is short-lived when she is stabbed to death seconds later by Acrisius. Io offers Perseus the sword juice gave him before dying. He eventually uses it to slay the monster, and he accepts the flying horse. Simultaneously, Hades approaches Juice in Olympus, requesting permission to release Grokka. Juice permits Hades to do anything he wants hoping his offspring will return to him. Back in Argos, a cult has formed to sacrifice the princess, so the Kraken gets her instead of them. The enormous beast is unleashed, causing the Argos to shake. Jusen treats his brother to end the unrest since he believes the Priers will help him, but his children are terrified. Hades taunts his brother, arguing that he has been a fool and that the dread of the people is fueling him. As a result, the princess is hanged from a bridge as a sacrifice. But the beast does not just take her as the people expected. The humanoid bats are free to murder anyone they choose. 
When Perseus comes and climbs the bridge with Medusa's head, the Kraken rises from the water and is poised to attack the princess. The demigod summons Medusa and beams her gaze at the colossal beast. The massive beast turns to stone, and Medusa and the princess fall into the water. Before Perseus can act, Hades appears in his most vulnerable condition in front of him. Perseus strikes his uncle with his magical sword, sending the god back to the underworld where he is imprisoned forever. Perseus eventually rescues the princess and carries her to the beach. Andromeda proposes to Perseus as her spouse in exchange for sparing her life. But Perseus declines since he has no desire to become king in the future. In the last scene, Deuce appears to see his son, allowing him to remain a human for the rest of his life. Juice tells Perseus that Hades will return to rule the earth in darkness when he amasses enough fear from humanity. In the end, Juice gives his son a wonderful present by reviving Io. So, what are your thoughts on this film? Please let me know in the comments. And if you like my video, please like and subscribe to see more. I'll see you all again soon.